Grand Theft Auto is a series created by Rockstar Games, and it sets the bar higher than its competitors. It basically leads the way for other studios to follow. Grand Theft Auto V is the newest installment in the Grand Theft Auto series, and it's the first one to focus on its online aspect. GTA V costs $265 million to make, and it has made $6 billion in sales, and at least an additional $500 million in microtransactions alone. This makes GTA V the most financially successful media title of all time. Game that is shattering sales records. That is to say the least. The game made almost one billion dollars in sales in just the first 24 hours. Worldwide sales top 800 million dollars. That's one night, easily blowing away all expectations, and is now on its way to taking over the world's highest-grossing entertainment vehicle ever. Bigger than movies, sporting events, and concerts. Opening day sales for the fifth installment of the video game surpassed. Wait for it. $800 million. That's more than the top four biggest box office opening weekends of all time combined. Doesn't exactly sound like child's play anymore, does it? The game is a technical marvel, and it sits at the top of the ranks. It practically seems like the perfect game. So what's wrong with it? Money. What is it? What's it worth? Where is it? Why is it? Let's talk about GTA Online Currency. The in-game currency can be purchased with real money via the six-tier shark card system. Based on these numbers, if you wanted to buy a Ruiner 2000 and a Hunter, it would cost you $123. You're probably thinking that you could just earn this money in the game, but unfortunately, that would actually take you about 20 hours of constantly running the same heists over and over with three others without failing. But we'll talk more about that problem later. First, let's talk about what you can buy. GTA Online has a diverse range of cars, boats, airplanes, bunkers, nightclubs, and basically anything else Rockstar could muster up to sell to you. but everything comes with a hefty price tag. There are about 414 vehicles you can buy, but the majority of them are overpriced. In fact, 120 of them range from one to $5 million. Looking at the entire vehicle catalog, 15% of the vehicles are over 2 million, 29% are over 1 million, and 48% of the vehicle catalog is over half a million dollars. Rockstar values half of its vehicle catalog at 10 US dollars each. This means if you wanted to fill a 10 car garage with $500,000 cars with max performance upgrades, no cosmetic upgrades, it would cost 84 US dollars in shark cards. Some expensive vehicles can't even be purchased without equally expensive storage zones being bought first. Let's look at what a new DLC offers. DLCs for GTA Online usually come with a list of new vehicles, clothing, and sometimes new types of bases. For example, we'll use After Hours. After Hours came out with 10 nightclub locations, 15 vehicles, and over 250 new items of clothing for male and female characters. Let's say you wanted to buy a nice nightclub and all the vehicles. We won't include the clothing prices, but they're also expensive. In total, the cost of every vehicle and one nightclub is $26,881,640. That amounts to roughly $340 US dollars in shark cards, or grinding heists for 67 hours straight, or at the average minimum wage in the US, 46 hours of work. Last I checked, DLCs weren't six times the cost of the original game. Inflation is a general increase in prices and fall in the purchasing value of money. 
that's necessary in society but completely absent in GTA Online. In 1980, the minimum wage for Americans was $3.10, while in 2019, the minimum wage is $7.25. In 1980, a gallon of gas was $1.20, and in 2019, the average cost of gas per gallon is $2.74. The idea is simple, it's when costs go up, so too should earnings. However, both shark cards and in-game earnings have remained the same since their inception, all while the price of vehicles have risen, and the market has become so saturated with higher quantities of things to buy, yet Rockstar still values their cards the same as they did back in 2013. Being a new player in GTA Online in 2019 is like a toddler starting school in 12th grade, but their classmates aren't 17, they're university students with flying rocket motorcycles. Overwhelming amounts of pricey content create unreachable objectives, and when the lobby is filled with players who already have large amounts of goods, they then have the upper hand. I have the high ground! Not only is it hard for a new player to earn enough money to buy weapons to stand a fighting chance, they have to level up high enough to be allowed to purchase many items. So when you're new, you're dead. And your only option is passive mode. Welcome to the Rockstar Store! See anything you like? Hi, I'm new here. Can you recommend anything? Of course! Let's see what we have for you. How's the Avenger sound? It's a sleek helicopter that transforms into a plane. Take your operation to the sky, as you can run operations inside the unit with several stations for your crew. That's really cool. How much is that? Well, let's see. We're looking at $50. Oh, 50 bucks? That's a lot Well, of... hold on, sir. Were you interested in any upgrades? You actually won't have access to several of the features without these upgrades, and I'm sure you want a fresh coat of paint that matches your style. Uh, well, I guess. How much is it with the upgrades? That would be $70. You made a great choice, sir! This helicopter will look fantastic in your facility hangar section. My... What? Do you have a facility, sir? Um, no. Oh, no problem, sir. I'll just add a facility to your order. And that's $80. So we'll just add that on. So that's $150. Are we paying with debit or credit? The amount of time it takes to earn money in the game is ridiculous. It's long and hard work to earn money with a real job to spend on shark cards, but even then, that's much easier than earning it in-game. Here's a hypothetical solution. To fix the issue, shark cards need to offer more money in the game for real money. For example, a dollar per 670k. In-game earnings also need to be increased to be more worthwhile. $1,100,000 an hour should be accomplishable. This would take the nightclub down to $45 to purchase all of its vehicles in one nightclub, which is high, but an acceptable DLC price. And it would also make it about 25 hours of money earning gameplay. This is much better than being worth 350 US dollars and about 67 hours of grinding one heist with three other people who can spare that kind of time. GTA Online should be a game not a job. This new price suggestion increases the shark card's worth many times over, as it is currently 8 million equals $100, and with this method, 8 million equals $12. This would make the hunter and ruiner that we earlier valued at $123 instead now cost $14. From a business perspective, while this does make it harder for Rockstar to earn the same amount per shark card, it does increase the likelihood that players would even purchase a shark card to begin with. It's likely that most players would use shark cards to purchase at least one thing. If 5% of 1,000 people paid the old price, they'd get $6,125. If 44% of 1,000 people paid the new price, they'd get $6,160. So most players would agree that asking $123 for two vehicles in a game is a bit much. But on the other hand, most players would likely agree that $14 
is pretty reasonable. We must remember that GTA Online is not a free-to-play game, yet they still charge more for non-cosmetic items than free-to-play games charge for cosmetic items. This is how the pay-to-win aspect is exercised. Rockstar's greed to get money in any way they can, squeezing it out of the player base, is destroying online. In the sea, there are big fish and there are little fish. The same is true on land. But which are you? Isn't it time to define yourself? At Shark, we have different Shark credit cards based on your level of insecurity. Let your credit card color define you. Shark, for the apex predator. For a serious look at how Rockstar values their content, we're going to combine all the prices of every single vehicle, the most expensive variant of each building along with its customization options being maxed. We'll also add the total combined price for all the weapons, then adding up all these prices we'll see what the total is for every item in GTA Online. $5,780 US dollars in shark cards. This total price doesn't even include clothing, Benny's upgrades, or arena upgrades. The average cost of every vehicle before upgrades is $937,000, or $18. Do you feel that on average a vehicle in GTA is worth $18 US dollars? The money system is broken, it's discouraging to new players, and it's frustrating for existing players. And when you create a system that's too hard on its people, the people get fed up with the system and resist it. This is where you see more players resorting to modding. Because what do they have to lose? They spend $30 on a mod menu and have access to limitless money. Then they money drop, which further destroys the in-game economy. Simple solutions like increasing the amount of job payouts and increasing the worth of the shark cards would encourage players to both play and pay. Rockstar has created a world similar to our own, where money is king, where you pay to win, where you have to have money to make money. The game is dying, even though new content is being added regularly, and money? Money is the biggest reason why. GTA used to be reasonably realistic. San Andreas had the occasional hidden jetpack, but nothing was meant to be taken too seriously. We would expect a level of reasonableness in the Grand Theft Auto series. GTA Online took that reasonableness and shot it in the head. The game is now an eight-year-old's dream. Terribly cheesy flying cars, terrible subatomic guns, weird laser miniguns, This isn't Halo, or Call of Duty Advanced Warfare, this is GTA. The stadium, aside from being another cash grab, is really out of place as well. It's Rocket League meets GTA. But it's forgivable compared to the other things on this list. Look at it this way. These examples of ridiculousness are comparable to adding helicopters and supercars to Red Dead Online. They don't belong in the era, so don't put them in the era. The decision to include these weird additions destroy the timeline that this game was supposed to be set in. The events in GTA Online take place before the events of the single player campaign, yet the stakes were raised so much higher in the heists with Lester. It has to be the Russians or the North Koreans, or the Iranians, or the Chinese using a proxy agent. We're trying to stop a global crisis and you're quibbling about employment law. With super government level underground bases, submersible water vehicles, flying hover cars, uh, stealth helicopters, these things. Then a few months later, he's in his house greeting Michael, acting like the upcoming bank heist will be the biggest job they've ever done. The Holy Grail, the Union Depository. Now they say it cannot be hit. It hasn't been yet. Always dreaming of one thing and one thing only. The big one. The big one. The, the big, big one. one! What is the big one? 
<laughs> the Union Depository. Around 200 million in gold bricks, all taken from kindly Uncle Sam, who will spend the rest of our lives being hunted by government officials if we live through the attempt. But, but it'll be my, uh, our masterpiece. On top of that, where are the cheesy hover vehicles, the rocket bikes, and the ridiculous nonsense in the GTA 5 campaign? I looked up some examples of issues with the GTA Online and GTA campaign inconsistencies. Here are some of the more glaring issues I saw. This is from a Kotaku article written by Zach Zweizen. Here he points out some issues in the chronology because of a biker named Terry Thorpe who Trevor supposedly killed in GTA 5, but if the timeline is right, Terry should still be alive and well in GTA Online since it happened first. Also, in a mission early in the game, Lester mentions that no one's ever even tried to rob the Union Depository, but in online, you do try, and you succeed with armored ramp cars, so how did he not hear about it when he lives right down the road from the bank he's always wanted to rob? And in this last section, he basically talks about how the world hasn't changed at all to reflect any sort of growth. The skyscraper's still under construction, the same ads are still on TV, and characters that died in 2013 can still call and text you while you're working on missions that take place in 2017. The whole thing is just a big, confusing mess. These issues are so saturated in the game that people are even writing articles about it. The mass state of confusion Rockstar has created by selling out their brand is frustrating to so many fans of the GTA series. GTA Online wants to be everything to everyone. It's overly ambitious and corrupted ambiguity. The ambition crosses the line to the point where it sacrifices its own integrity to push for relevancy and continued player interaction. In doing so, they betray their core audience. It's no longer the great game it was. Rockstar was the studio that knew to avoid half-assed content cash grabs better than anyone else. Their success is directly correlated to their ability to pay attention to what the fans want and pay attention to the details. Yet they seem to have thrown all that out the window. The once believable city of Los Santos is now a confusing mess, populated with flying cars, flying bikes, underground facilities, and nearly endless lists of messy content. Rockstar, go back to your roots. If you want to keep players' attention, start adding big map updates. City updates that show the state evolving. By now, you could have added Las Venturas into the game. Players would much rather have new cities to explore than new rooms to buy. The copy and paste reskin updates are getting old, fast. Buy property A so you can store B type goods in storage facility C. We're done with it. It's insulting at this point. You can also do a season type system, similar to Fortnite, with weekly challenges and bonuses. These decisions would widely retain player interest. I went online to show how the community is. I would approach these players with no weapons to see how they'd react. And here's what happened. This was actually a better online experience than you'd usually run into. Most of the time you get bombed constantly no matter what you're doing, usually by a modder. The fact that Rockstar added missions that support player versus player activities in free mode in order to get paid for a job is ridiculous as well. When you consider that the disadvantages you're at when you're in a lobby filled with rocket bikes and future tanks, it's a lot to take in for a player that may be new or for a player that's just trying to deliver the goods from point A to point B. I think it's a bad design. On the subject of players using overpowered rocket bikes to attack you, these vehicles require no skill to use. They auto lock on and they make swift turnarounds. It ruins any sort of fair competition. It can also be difficult to shop in clothing stores as some players will come in, shoot up the place, disrupt the store, causing it to close. And then you have to go somewhere else to find clothes. Modders can put an end to having any joy in online. They can remind you in an instant why you quit playing the game. Whether they spawn a cage around you, spontaneously explode you, remove your weapons, or teleport their model to you and make obscene gestures, more often than not, the modder is a shallow being, hell-bent on controlling your experience and only allowing you to have fun if they deem it to be approved. The dark recesses of the modder's heart are filled with loneliness. They lack friends, empathy, and remorse. Not all modders are bad, but the ones that are stick out like a sore thumb.
heists are difficult to nearly impossible with random matchmade teammates. This is either because you've been paired with toxic teammates or uncoordinated buffoons. 80% of the time you get paired with players with zero communication, no mic, and no response to typing. Fortunately, there are solutions for players looking to do heists efficiently. The Discord server GTA Online has created a solution to this issue. They've done a great job of bringing players together in a productive way with administration that keeps the community in line and rooms everywhere to get a group together for a heist. I'll mention them again at the end of the video. Can you blame Rockstar for the community's actions? You can hold any studio responsible for how they manage their game. They give birth to a lot of these issues with neglectful money management, toxic weapon or vehicle additions, poor mod menu detectors and defenses, and a general lack of productive involvement. Now this isn't to say they don't do anything right, they have added countermeasures like a passive mode feature. However, people would abuse this feature, for instance with the rocket bike, players would kill with it and then go passive mode. But Rockstar took it a step further and countered this issue by denying passive mode to players in weaponized vehicles, and a 2 minute cooldown time after a kill before passive mode is available. These are steps in the right direction, and they show how Rockstar does have the ability to step in and fix community issues. By far, GTA takes longer than any other game to get going. On PC, you cannot tab out while you let the game load. If you do this, it will load perpetually. We loaded the game up a bunch of times and we got the average time that it took on PC to load the game up, which was 8 minutes. If you tried to load the game one time a day for a month, 31 days, you'd be looking at a loading screen for 4 hours for that month. Nico, it's Roman! I've come across some opportunities that you might Don't want to look at. Don't ask how I got this number. Hello, you know, know, Wally. You ever think that something's a new problem? When you get in GTA, you'll likely be welcomed with several pop-ups, phone calls, and emails. These invasive alerts push new content on you, usually nagging you to purchase new locations. I know I'm laboring the point, but- Boss? It's me. I know you don't care about- Your exec assistant again. I don't mean to hassle. Log on, take a look, and buy it. You won't regret it. Go to May's Bank Foreclosures and get one. These invasive advertisements are trying to sell you places that usually end up costing about $40 in shark cards. In most games, you're subjected to DLC offers and main menus. However, in GTA Online, you're interrupted during gameplay, often having phone calls appear while you're trying to play, crippling your ability to play properly. If you ignore the phone calls, they will not stop calling until you answer and listen to what they have to sell you. You already bought the game, and console players are paying for subscription services to be allowed to play online, and yet still, you're aggressively being advertised to. Rockstar treats you like a wallet, not a person. I know you don't care. I know you don't care. I know I'm laboring the point, but I don't mean to hassle. I know I'm laboring the point, but I don't mean to hassle. I don't mean to hassle. I, don't mean to I know I'm laboring the point. But... I know you don't care. I know you don't care. I don't mean to hassle. So in the end, Rockstar is selling a damaged product. Those who are spending money on that product are telling them that this behavior is acceptable. They're the leaders. Other studios likely look at their success and want to tap into that stream. We should demand better treatment. We aren't slaves. GTA is a game, not a full-time job. We have lives, jobs, and families. We expect games like this to be a source of entertainment. Missing out, getting low payouts, dealing with toxic players, none of that is entertaining. Other games are dated like League, CSGO, Fortnite, and The Crew 2, yet they manage to stay fresh without the damaging effects of overcharging their player base. They offer fair prices, earnable in-game currency, and weekly events or challenges. These are not pay-to-win business models. 
What if you had to pay to equip a gun in Fortnite when you landed on the field? That's what GTA has become. Three million dollar rocket bikes that put the players at unfair advantages over less well off players. For a game that does so much right when it comes to its graphics, the campaign, the attention to detail, it's hard to believe that they miss the mark on understanding what makes a game good online. It isn't difficult to understand that what they're doing is unfun and they need to focus on having a fun game. It's not a lot to ask when you're paying 60 bucks and then when they value one vehicle at $100 it just blows your mind because you think about $60 got you the game, it got you the campaign, the three characters, the story arc, and then $100 gets you a helicopter? None of this makes sense. I hope Rockstar Games can recognize these issues and keep them in mind while they're building the foundation for GTA 6.